Well then, here we are, out and about, on the bike, on the new boots. And obviously, with any new tires, first couple hundred kilometers, you need to take it relatively easy, just to get the shiny surface off the top, get the release agents all scrubbed off. I mean, there's lots of talk backwards and forth about how maybe tires don't have release agent on them anymore, maybe they're not so slippery, maybe they don't need so much scrubbing in, but in any case, you should always just take it easy for the first couple hundred kilometers, so... I've actually come out to a little area of road where there's a bunch of bendy curvy stuff but there's nothing particularly high speed because to start with you want to wear off the middle part of your tire and then gradually bit by bit increasing the lean angle into your corners till you get the whole tire scrubbed off as far as you possibly can ideally right to the very edge but i'm not promising any complete chicken strip eradication today so just gently gradually increasing the lean into the bends obviously while i'm scrubbing the tires in i'm not going to be pushing the boundaries of traction and feel but what i can do in that time is tell you a little bit about the tires and what potentially makes them so good obviously the first thing that you're going to notice is that crazy tread pattern which i actually think looks really cool as tires go these are a pretty hot looking set of rubbers and this new tread pattern is a combination of newly designed wells and sipes designed to break the surface tension of the water on the road and disperse it from the contact patch faster than ever before and now the sipes themselves have been completely redesigned they're using michelin's new xst evo x sipe technology now what that multi-syllabic tagline means is that the sipes are created in such a way that as the tire wears the side actually becomes wider and this means that as the tire gets older it can still disperse exactly the same amount of water as it could when it was new in fact michelin have conducted tests and shown that a road 5 tire that's already driven 5,000 kilometers will break just as quickly as a brand spanking new Pilot Road 4. And as well as this widening Sipe techno wizardry, Michelin haven't stopped there on the quest for better performance. Because on the front, they've used what they call their 2CT compound strategy, which is basically the tire has a harder wearing compound in the center of the tire for longer life in a straight line, and a softer, more grippy compound on the edges for better grip in the bends. Now, Michelin's 2CT system, it's nothing new. The Pilot Power 2CT came out in 2006. Of course, the two compounds on the front tire are both relatively standard compounds silica rich apparently they've also been tweaked a little bit to increase wet performance over the outgoing pilot road 4 and to also hopefully improve cold weather performance and warm-up times but on the back they're using the slightly more recently created 2ct plus strategy now what that means it's basically the same approach there's a harder wearing compound in the middle of the tire there's then a softer compound on the shoulder of the tire the harder compound actually extends, goes underneath the softer compound on the shoulders in order to increase the stability of the shoulder of the tires. And in terms of rubber composition, this is the first big change from the outgoing Pilot Road 4 in that the shoulders of the Road 5 have 100% carbon black compound rubber. And also it's worth noting that on those softer shoulder compounds, the last section is completely slick with no sipes, no wells, no tread of any kind. But that's only after you reach a lean angle of about 35 degrees. Because obviously Michelin are thinking that no ordinary sane street riding biker is gonna be cranking their bike over to more than 35 degrees when the road is wet. But it does mean when the road is dry, when you get over to your softer compound shoulder areas, you've got an incredibly sticky carbon black compound and you've also got more rubber on the floor because there's no gaps chopped out to make way for grooves, wells, sipes or anything. It's all rubber on the floor. But once again, when it comes to stability, that's not where it ends because Michelin are also using their ACT or adaptive casing technology on the carcass of the tire. Now what this means is the carcass of the tire is actually broken up into five distinct zones and each zone is tensioned slightly differently. So that means in simplified terms, you've got a really stiff central portion of the tire for straight line stability, high speed stability and then as you start to crank the bike over it gets a little bit more flexible meaning that when you're in the corners your tire can flex around a bit and search for grip a bit more on the road surface and then it stiffens up again as you get to the shoulder of the tire meaning that you've got maximum stability when you're cranked over at maximum lean angle so, 
rapidly starting to push the tires further onto the shoulders now it's always amazing to me how different it feels when you get a new set of shoes and just the fact that the profile is so much more rounded makes the bike tip in a lot easier after you've spent so long getting used to your steadily flattening off old tires new tires always feel amazing don't they makes the bike feel so much more responsive but with that in mind once again Michelin have gone a step further and that's because the standard fitment tires for my bike on the rear is a 190-50 R17 but in order to create a more sporty feel a quicker tip in Michelin have created a 190-55-17 and for those of you who don't know the middle number the 50 or the 55 in this case what that means is the height of the tire from the rim to the highest point is 50% of the width. So for any given width, in this case it's 190, a 55 is going to be 55% of 190, so that's going to be taller than a 190 50 17. You follow? So what that means is with a taller tire on the same size rim, they've created a much taller, more sharply curved profile, which creates this feeling of easier tipping in of the bike into the corner. But obviously, as I said, while I'm scrubbing in, I'm not going to be pushing the boundaries of cornering stability or testing the limits of traction. But I am going to go around this roundabout a couple of times just to get the left-hand side a bit scrubbed in. Lovely. So yeah, unfortunately you're going to have to wait for later videos to see how all these things stack up to affect the performance of the Road 5. But I've got a lot of riding planned for the rest of this summer, so don't you worry, there's going to be plenty to see. But even at this very early stage, as I already said, the bike feels very nimble and tippy and into all of the bends. The very first second I jumped on the bike and rode it away from the garage, it tipped into the first junction so quickly, I actually had to quickly get my wits about me to keep the bike upright. So there you go. So begins my long-term test of the Michelin Road 5 Sport Touring tires. Watch this space, well, this space, for hopefully many, many thousands of kilometers of riding with these boots on the FZ1. Hang on a minute, I can't stop the video here. I've already gone to there. Nah. God, that's like a four centimeter chicken strip. Blinking hot though. But while we're here, you can see the profile of those sipes there with it being thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. So as it wears, it widens out. Clever buggers. So with that in mind, I'm gonna carry on, try and find some more twisties to scrub a bit more of the shiny rubber off. But before I go, just for the records, we've currently got 38,813 kilometers on the clock. So when it comes to changing the tires, that's gonna be the all important number to see exactly how much mileage we got out of them. But to you at home, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you very soon in the next video. Take care and goodbye.